us please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you again tonight for the grace to be back in thy house. We thank you for your goodness unto us in the morning. And we're looking up unto you again for your visitation tonight. The Lord, you will come by in your home manner, O Lord, and break the bread of life. In the evening time when the sun was down, diverse needs were brought into your presence. And the Bible said they all went on with joy. May that be our portion tonight. Be with the saints. You know their needs, you know their heart desires. According to your riches in glory, may you supply. May you make them happy. May you say to them, Lord, establish your people. Lord, we want you to go before us in this new week to defeat every plan of the devil, to frustrate Satan in all his ways, and to open the windows of heaven that your blessings may pour upon us beyond what we have ever known. Grant it is our hard desire as we ask your blessings upon your word this time and ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you, saints. Glad to have you back in the house of the Lord tonight. Let's turn our uh, Bibles to Exodus chapter 1. Again. to read from um, from verse 12 of verse 11 and we're reading across to chapter 2 verse 10 <coughs> Amen. Amen Exodus chapter 1 verse 11 and uh, across to chapter 2 up to the tenth verse. Therefore, they did set over them tax masters. They did set over them tax masters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter <coughs> with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Chifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives, and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. For they are lively and are delivered ever or before the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. 
And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer, she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and dubbed it with a slime, sorry, with slime, and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what will be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and a maid walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent a maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became a son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Amen. God bless you. You may please be seated. And those who are already sitting, you may please enjoy your sitting. <laughs> Amen. In the <clears throat> in the morning we started on the thought. Uh, we started the book of Exodus in the morning. We started the book of Exodus in the morning, and in the morning we we called it the preparation for Exodus. We are still in the preparation still for Exodus. In the morning we were looking at a, <clears throat> uh, we are looking at the background that brought about Exodus, and. Uh, we saw in there that the most important thing that is making things happen in the way it is happening in the chapter we read was the fact that this thing was the word of God. And uh, I stress it very well in the morning that if it is the word of God, then it is the program of God. And uh, God does not need anybody to help him operate his program. What he needs from you and her is to yield completely to him. And uh, first to realize, if we can realize that this is God's program, then whatever is the content of that program, as they unfold, will be accepting it as the operation of God. And uh, the actors in this program they don't have much option than to play their part in the program because the word of God cannot return to God void and the word of God can never fail. So whether somebody acted proper or somebody acted improper he is bringing to pass the word of God all the same. You will hear sometimes the Bible will say so that the word that was spoken the word of God that was spoken to so 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 uh, could happen or according to the word of God certain things will just happen. Amen. 
because that word is undefeatable and uh, may God help us alright so we also saw in the morning that whatever you and I do could have a reflection on our generation and uh, that was why I told you in the morning that it doesn't matter the family background you presently have you can change it if it is not a good background you can, you can change it by changing your sensory Amen. You can come to become part of Abraham's family. And uh, the only way we get to be part of Abraham's family is when we become connected to him by Christ and the faith that Abraham has. Then whatever has been against you, whatever is intended to be against you, and whatever is currently against you is knocked out completely. And you become a victor, you become a free man. Amen. So, we also showed us in the morning I couldn't, I won't be able to go through all this Because I'm seeing new faces God bless you brother Ophot Amen You are welcome in Jesus name Amen And God bless you brother Joe You are welcome back Where's brother Samson Wanji? He should be back He was in Hawaii this morning Amen God bless him also Praise God So I'm just trying to give them a little recap And uh, we told us in the morning that what made the exodus become necessary at the time it happened even though it's in God's program like that it's because a pharaoh that knew not Joseph and I explained what that meant to you in the morning amen the prophet actually said a pharaoh that knew not the blessings of Joseph so that was my background to give you the explanation in the morning there is nobody who will not know Joseph in Egypt He was not an ordinary man He was a great prince In the land of Egypt That's one of the descriptions of Joseph in the Bible So But it was a pharaoh Who knew not his blessings Or who does not want to reckon With his blessings Who wants to despise all the achievements Of Joseph And that the only way to do it Is to feast on Joseph's People And uh, we told us that Joseph's people did not do anything wrong other than allowing the promises of God to come to pass in their life. That they are multiplying and flourishing and expanding was what Genesis chapter 15 said. So it is not their fault. It is just their destiny to prosper. It is their destiny to multiply. It is their destiny to flourish. I told you when we were under Genesis, that there was a reason God kept the record the census number of those who went to Egypt is for you to be able to testify to the faithfulness of God and the power of his word they went into Egypt there are 70 people they came out of Egypt 2 million strong because thus said the Lord can never fail he said and uh, he said he, to, he promised them that they will flourish and he also said they will sojourn in that land that is not theirs and he will bring them out with a mighty hand and I told you in the morning that one aspect of that promise had come to pass they've actually flourished they've actually multiplied and they are even becoming mightier according to the testimony of Pharaoh himself than his own land a family, just a family is becoming mightier than an entire nation of several hundreds of families Oh, how else can we testify to the goodness of the Lord? How else can we testify to the faithfulness of the Lord unto his friend Abraham? And uh, because they are becoming mighty and flourishing, Egypt, that used to be their host, became uncomfortable. They became threatened. Amen. Sometimes the opposition you face and the challenges you face it's not because you injured people or you did something wrong to them. They are just threatened. If they are not threatened, they are just envious. And if they are not envious, there is a clash. Anyway, envy is a spiritual clash manifesting physically. Threat is a spiritual clash manifesting physically. Amen. So the prophet said, do no wrong, say no wrong to them they will still find an occasion to fight you. He said, because you live in different dimensions. So all these are 
the forces that are interplaying here. But no matter what the forces are, they are only bringing the word of God to pass. And I said, that is what you must always see, as David saw in his own time. He said, she might have been one of those God permitted to say something to David. And that helped David to have the right attitude towards him. So whatever anybody does, it's part of the package that God has designed for your life. Amen. And whatever he has written for man to do, is what man will do in the program. So let them fulfill theirs, and you fulfill yours. Amen. So, we also said in the morning, we dwelt on this and close on that, that the scheme of this man is to stop the population. Is to stop the you know, the multiplication progression of that church. Don't forget, he does not mind them having money. He does not mind them having many things. But what Pharaoh couldn't stand is for them to be multiplying. And I said, it is that multiplication that God promised. Do you understand? Every other thing is an addition. Because it is only multiplication that progresses life. Are you catching it? So it is the life that God is interested in. Not necessarily their cows. He knows, he knows if they could seek first the kingdom of God, which is life to the believer, all other things will follow. The devil also understands that. He said, the only way for me to stop these people is to stop their multiplying. Because the process of multiplication is the process of progressing the life, bringing forth more lives, bringing forth more lives. That will become, amen, a mighty army that can stand toe to toe with anything. And what is all the battles of our life about? It's about life. The life of the word that we must live. The life of Christ that we must reproduce. That is the only thing the devil is trying to take from you. Let me tell you, it doesn't mind how many cars you have. It doesn't, have, how man, it doesn't mind how many houses you have. What he minds is you being a Christian. And you must understand that. If, 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 uh, if, uh, if the devil minds the cars and things you have, he will not give to the people of his kingdom. Do you realize that people who don't serve God, a lot of them are even wealthier than those who serve the Lord. Most times it is like that. Bill Gates, that is the richest man on the earth, does he believe in the existence of God? Jeff Bezos is another one. All of them, they don't, they don't even put value. They don't even, some don't even recognize God exists. The prophet said the devil will make things comfortable for them never to see the need for God in their lives. So it is not those minor things that disturb Satan or disturb God. Did you catch that? You've, you, those minor things influence your life. Either way, because you don't have the real thing. If you have the real thing, car will not make you arrogant. That you have a house will not make you proud. Amen. It could make you happy, but it is not your joy. Are you getting where I'm going? Because even Satan, who is supposed to be vile, he knows the right thing to focus on. What he wanted is the multiplication. Because if you could stop multiplication, he will it will stop the progression of the life of God which is his desire he knew that to attack the multiplication is to attack God's word are you catching it if you could get you to be unbeliever it doesn't matter if you own 15 houses He attacks those things. Let church listen to me. He attacks those things, your properties, not because he's interested in them. He attacks your properties in order to get you to denounce Christ. 
Did you see that? And you can look at it through the entire scriptures. When he came to attack Job, what was he attacking? He was attacking every Job had, everything Job had, in order to make Job to cause God. Because it is in denying God that he has truncated, he has eventually dealt a blow to the life, to the multiplication of Job. Because Job is expected to reproduce Christ. Church of God, I told you in the morning, I said, I will show you why God was so delighted in those midwives. Do you remember? He was delighted in those midwives because the midwives became instruments to propagate the life. Remember, this journey was physical. So the multiplication of those people was important to God. Whereas he had 70 witnesses that went in there, he came out with 2 million witnesses. God was trying to populate his own kingdom. And this is the reason you are here. To become the reproduction of Christ and to bring forth Christ. Why are we preaching? To be impregnated with the word so that you can reproduce the life of Christ. You will see the connection very soon. This is what the devil is interested in attacking. Then when he couldn't do that, he said, give me Job himself. Let me attack Job. What did he say? He said, all that a man has, he will give for his life. It is your life. More importantly, spiritual life that the devil is interested in. That is the only thing he is pulling with God. If you could get your life, he gets you to be his subject and his worshiper. Are you catching it? But if he cannot get that, he hasn't gotten nothing. Thanks be to God. He cannot get our lives. All the people of the earth will worship him. Except those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life. Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of God? That love is the life of God. What shall stop us from loving God? What shall stop us from becoming the reproduction? The bride of Christ that we carry the seed of Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you see why he was attacking the sons more than the girls? Because they are the continuation, they are the only one who carries life to do what? To bring a reproduction of that life. He said, go and kill them. That's what he's interested in. Now, when that thing is not succeeding, what was his article? He said, go and be killing when that was no 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 it didn't start with killing he said go and add to their labor they don't have tax masters before <laughs> he said create tax masters these tax masters don't joke <laughs> the civil servants are telling us their current name today amen they don't joke they have a mandate. Check your Bible. They have the mandate to make life bitter. For Exodus people. They don't have problem with the Egyptians. But they are to face the Israelites. And what are they targeting? Their target is to put them in a useless condition in order not to be able to bring forth life. He said it is because they are not busy. That is why they can be... Later, he said that is why they can be talking of uh, uh, an exodus. But now, it is because they are not busy. That is why they have time for their wives. That is the depth in there. He said, put them under the yoke of the tax masters. Set targets for them like companies are doing today you can see that there is nothing new under the sun they set unrealistic targets they will tell a young lady you need to bring 500 million in the first quarter of the year what does that bank want to take from you your life 
If you don't understand, understand it now. Because to bring 500 million, they want to, they don't care if you corrupt your virtues. They even tell you, you are not dressing, your dressing is not appealing. All those companies have become agency of the devil. In order, they will say, if you meet uh, 500 million, we'll give you 10% bonus. Now, you are looking at the bonus of 10%, is that 50 million or whatever it is? You are looking at that, but for you to get that, you will destroy your virtue. You are losing 100 billion to change, in fact, uncountable. What would you give in exchange for your soul? That's what the Bible said. Is 50 million the worth of your soul? So those agencies, those banks are agencies of the devil to destroy your life. And they don't care if your life is destroyed. They will give you the general manager as an MS. They don't care whether you settle that. In fact, they love people like that. And the places that they are not giving targets they are walking you I, I went to South Africa the first time I went to South Africa was in 20, 2004, 2005 I saw the banking there they opened at 9 they closed by 3 or 4 bro David I don't know what you people are doing from 7 to 12 in the midnight South African banks are 3 times bigger or 10 times bigger than the banks in Nigeria, am I lying? Is confirming it. And yet a bigger structure with more robust financial structure work between 9 to 3 or 4. But here, you will work from 7 till 12 midnight and you think you are doing work. That is why a lot of young people at that time were dropping dead. Am I lying? I'm just using, I'm just using contemporary situation to give you a picture of what it was then. And to let you know that there is nothing new under the sun. The old target is to destroy your life. You will make money that you will never have the time to spend. The people with whom I graduated uh, in 1992, I saw some of them. They work, they are executive assistant. One was executive assistant to uh, Intercontinental MD at that time. I, I said, you are a very rich man now. He said, my brother, there is money, but there is no time to spend it. I said, why? He said, Monday to Friday, we are working. Saturday, we are working. Sunday, we are working. I said, even Sunday, you are working. I said, you are making the money of the devil. Because I knew I committed these guys were to Christ before. But this time around, they have no time. They are making blood money. And some of them are dead today. This particular guy I told I, I, I told you of saw me some you know a year or two after. I said, How are you? He said, What are you, how is your bank? He said, I'm not there again. I said, Why? He said, I almost died. He said, in my in the in the MD's office, he said about five people died. I said, Who was killing them? He said, Fatigue. <laughs> and stress. He said, so I sat down one day. I said, is this how I will make the money and I will die? He said, I resigned. I said, so what are you doing? He said, I am pleased to be selling shirts. And he, I'm telling you. He said, it gives me peace of mind. I'm so relaxed. I walk at my pace. He said, I never know what it is to sit with the family. I never know what it is for us to just go out on the weekend. He said, even my family my wife and children are thanking God on my behalf. I'm not joking. That was what he told me. It was the tax masters of Egypt. He said, make their life bitter. Give them rigor. And in the process, the man who has gone from morning till night, how will he have time for his wife? That was what Pharaoh did, wanted. And why was he wanting that? Because he wanted to stop life. Anything, church, let me say this, that trade your relationship, that put your relationship at stake between you and God is coming for your life. 
I don't care how much that job is lucrative. Some years ago, they gave me a job at Roadtune Transport Motors. Roadtune is one of the biggest transport network in the country for those who are old enough at that time. And they felt that with the position they are giving me as a young man is a promising position. You can even rise to be general manager. God bless you. I'm coming to it now. <laughs> you can. They bought all kind. They held all kind of franchises of vehicles on this road, especially if you are going to South South. It is road to motors or none. And it's my privilege to work in a company like that. Then after the interview, when they have adopted that they are unemployed, they said, any questions? I said, yes. I said, how many days of the week do we work? They said, good question. They said, you work, it initially said, you work Monday to Saturday. Ah, I said, so no breathing space. Then the other one said, you better tell him correctly. Then I said, what is correct? He said, we work Sunday to Sunday. I said, son what? He said, Sunday to Sunday. I said, ah. I said, is the Sunday an option or not? They said, it is not an option. Is it a shift or not? They said, it is not a shift. I said, uh, well, I am sorry. If you cannot shift Sunday, I have to shift myself. And the guy said, what do you mean? Any job that take away my Sunday, I cannot do it. The one said, "Ah, what is wrong with you? Do you mean you want to drop this? I said, I will drop it for something more valuable to me. I never resumed a road tune. Today, where is road tune? Some of you born 25 years ago, did you ever hear what, any road tune? You didn't hear road tune. You see that? So this is how I will have thrown away my life with road tune. Road tune is no more by the grace of God I am here. And I am not who I was then. God has helped me. I am better than I was then. Where road tune cannot take me or has not taken me, I have gone beyond that by the grace of God. What was Rotun looking for? My life. If they don't kill me physically, they will destroy me spiritually. This has always been the tactics of the devil. Increase their labor so as to reduce their fellowship. The men of Israel cannot fellowship with their wives. And as such, they cannot multiply. They cannot bring forth. They cannot reproduce life. Because of the yoke of the tax masters. You also have a husband today. Amen. You also have a family today. Amen. Christ is our husband. And we must not be too busy to fellowship with him. Because we are to reproduce life. Do you know why this fellowship is important? The prophet said by human technology today it is possible for a female to bring forth without interaction with male. Do you realize that? All these you are Greek eggs that you are eating. It is the female conceiving by herself. She's even, she's, she has a smarter process than even Virgin Mary now. It is the female end conceiving by herself, not turning herself and arching. No. Wait. So, it is a, you know, arch, sorry, arching a egg by herself. Don't worry. But do you know, no, no, no. What is the process? Not arching. I'm using the wrong word. Laying eggs. That's the word I'm looking for. Is laying egg by herself. Are you catching it? Now, every egg that was laid in that process, do you know they can never come to, they cannot become babies? Do you know why? Because they don't have life. 
you are only you are only you are only using them to fill your system. <laughs> if you want the one that can be asked, it must have a male content. Are you catching it? So the life you produce without interaction with the male content is a fake life. Is a sterile life. It's a mimic of Christianity. There must be interaction for there to be life progression. Otherwise, we are just feeding Satan. Hence, lay egg. Amen. They even told us to be careful of how much of that egg we are eating. Because that egg has no male content. In the male is the hemoglobin that brings life. That egg has none. So you are just eating a waste. And such is the Christian who is trying to live a Christian life without interaction with the male. Why are you not interacting with the male? The tax masters who were under command by the Pharaoh to make life a rigor for you. To make life uneasy. To make life bitter for you. Then I come to the spiritual tax masters. Hallelujah. Are you ready for it? <laughs> spiritual. You see, we saw the spiritual killing of the children in the morning. Isn't it? We even played something to show how the devil is doing the killing. That's just one aspect in several ways. What are those things that prevent your daily devotion? Mm-hmm. Uh, you say, some of you will be smart. If I ask, have you read your Bible today? You say, we read. It's family altar. The one a lot of you are conditioned to read. You are conditioned because even many of us who are adults, amen, some of you have been doing it from credo. I know a lot of you were even being brought to the family altar since the time you were in the womb. Your mama will sit with you in the womb and will even pray and prophesy into your life. Now, till you were born, till you have grown now, some of you are still not used to family altar or its timing. They still have to call you and wait for you. They still have to wake you. There is danger in that. Amen? Because many of you will grow to have families tomorrow. You cannot give what you don't have. And a lot of you, because of tiredness of the tax master, you wake up just in time to freshen up. You tell the family, do the prayer, we shall meet. If you are doing that, you are under the yoke of the tax masters. We shall meet. Okay, in the evening, the tax master kept you away. The sister and the baby and the children have prayed before you come in. In the morning, you just woke up in time to leave. And some of you, you leave and you, you leave home at unholy hours because you have to catch up. Oh yes, I'm talking of realities. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. You say I cannot wake up the family at that time. You go. Then you come back at 11 a.m. The family is already sleeping. 11 p.m. The family is already sleeping. You are under the yoke of the tax masters. Even your Saturdays are not free. Your Sundays are probabilities. And you think you have work. You don't have work. You say, but the job pays me enough. That is your value. You are not seeing the destruction of your generation. You are not seeing the destruction of your own life. And sisters, who are supposed to be at home? We were told that Susan Wesley devoted how many hours each day? Amen. Ah, you see, this is our old, old gospel now. <laughs> They are, still, they are still relevant. Are we not still alive? Don't we still have mothers today? 
Don't we still have wives today? Don't we still have us wives today? Hallelujah. As the Bible changed, the woman devoted two and a half hours. Amen. She had 17 be responding on 17 children. Amen. We have been to a house oh, in Epworth, England. Yeah. Me and this brother have been to a house. Their house in Epworth in England. All those things you had, they were the truth. All the records were there. A lesson note for children. The things she teaches the children. How she made their clothes. Everything is still there. They kept all the records there. She will do that. And she will still spare two and a half hours every day. To pray and mention the name of each of the child. That sister lived above the effect of the tax masters. In the message hear his voice. He said, the prophet said, God is still ever so close to us. Amen. At a speaking range. That he can talk to us. We can fellowship with us. Amen. But he said, what kept him away is not because he is not speaking. But because our ears are clogged. We are not listening because strange voices have taken over. The strangest voice today is in your hands. Where is it? Bring it. This is the strangest voice. This is what most of you are worshipping. This is your most powerful tax master. From Instagram to, to Facebook to Snapchat to TikTok. The devil keep, keep, kept increasing it. TikTok is a reason something, right? And it will keep expanding it for you. Unconsciously, I want you to be honest with yourself. For those on the prayer, on the who couple, I'm holding the phone. A smartphone. A powerful, gigantic iPhone. What is this? iPhone 15. <laughs> iPhone, iPhone 12 Pro Max. <laughs> powerful one. From the powerful GM. Praise the Lord. So that is what I'm holding. Because you won't see that. Amen. And I'm saying, this is one of your most latent, powerful tax masters. And the devil is not done with you yet. For those who are even using it to make money, to sell their product, we can listen. That is their work. Even in working with it, does it not have time? Those of you who are doing remote jobs, don't you have time to resume and to close? But this one is 24 hours. You see sisters on their bed. You would know it by what they are posting. At 11 p.m., they are still here. Upgrading their status. Checking from one thing to the other. Some brothers, look, if you want to know how this is affecting you, they are all laughing now. They know what I'm talking about. If you want to know how this is affecting you, some brothers were honest with themselves. They let, it's a team of young brothers led by Judah and Co. They said, let us monitor the hours we spent on, on this phone. You understand? So, they said, so one said, it is not the problem that we can actually go in and access it. And they all sat down, dropped their phone. And they picked it one by one. Do you know, some people were alarmed to see that they were active, actively using phone for 18 hours in a day. And they said, okay, let's not talk. What were you doing on it for 18 hours? That actually, there is table on your phone. How many minutes did you spend on the table? There is Bible on your phone. How many? When they check it, table and the Bible. Table, do you know what I mean by table? The spoken word book. Amen. This was Judah giving testimony himself. Table and the Bible recorded the littlest percentage of the entire use time. Then they realized that on YouTube, on this one and that one, they carry 80 something, 90 something percent. Then they said, brothers, let us wait. What were we watching on YouTube? Is it some, is it preachings? Or is it something to develop 
Then they realized that it was vanities they were busy with. For so out of 18 hours of a day, about 14 hours were spent in vanities. And you will sit here, you'll be saying, Yes, I spent in vanity, and you are still spending it. No, 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 watch it. Yeah. Even Judah and the brother who carried the highest of uh, a, a table and Bible, they said they were still not comfortable with their percentages. But they scared over half of the time on table and Bible. He said, when we look at what we were doing, we are still not proud of ourselves as Christians. Sometimes you need that soul search in order to help yourself so that you don't think we are just making life miserable for you. This is your tax master. Sorry, I'm, I thought something. I don't. This is your tax master. Since you have been used to this tax master, what improvement has he done in your life? It has kept prayers away from you. It has kept the study of the world for you. And you are still wondering why your life is still upside down. And it drained your money. A lot of you have become so addicted that you can even beg to buy airtime, time. Or you borrow airtime. time. All is to buy data. Not even to make a meaningful call to a brother and say, God bless you, my sister. How is life going on? The Lord will take care of that thing. I'm praying for you. Ah, the prince is laughing at Is that too much? Am I asking for too much? Praise the Lord. I can see some quietness, isn't it? So that means you got to do something about it. Because you are under the power of the modern day tax masters. What you must realize today is that the tax masters is not making noise. But is more effective than those ones that were carrying us whip. These ones are very psychedelic. But they will achieve even far much more in your life than those who are carrying pain. They made it seem ambulance. You are unconscious of it. But be honest with yourself. When you go home tonight, do what I say. Check all the apps and look at the hours you are spending. If God gave us 24 hours, shouldn't we at least give him a tithe of our time? Shouldn't that be the minimum? How many of us are doing that? I'm not talking of family altar in the morning and at night. Your personal devotion your personal consecrations and you did things in your life that needed a change you need things that needs to be corrected you have things that you need to look up unto God for for a deliverance or for a breakthrough and yet the tax masters will not let you do it you live a life of bitterness a life of rigor they gave you momentary pleasure by keeping your eyes on the screen Amen. After you drop the phone, your misery continues. This was Pharaoh's idea. And if you think it was Pharaoh, I want to tell you that Pharaoh was just a pawn. It was just a tool being used. Because Pharaoh did not know the promise God made to Abraham in Genesis 15. But there was somebody who knew. They call him Satan. And all his activity is to do what? Attack the word of God. He wants to discredit it. He wants to put it in disrepute. He wants to show you that the word of God does not mean exactly what it says or is not as powerful. Let me tell you, this word remains powerful. But if the vessel trying to hold it is not clean, it will still not be effective. Are you blessed? Am I too hot for you? These things will help you and I. The tax masters increased their labor for no reason. They were not lazy. They were doing their job. When they were doing the job before increased labor, were they not living well by their wages? Increased labor does not necessarily mean increased wages. When they set all those targets for you, they know you cannot meet it. They know the commission can never come to you. 
because it's demons that congregated in your board meeting to set the target. You were yes, you were seeing human beings, but it's actually demons. It is beyond human to imagine to tell you do anything, you must get that money here. They don't care whether you bear brother Luke or sister Ruth. Since they've been making the money, what have they done? Have they improved the country? They don't set that kind of target in South Africa. Close here. And yet, upon all your targets, you've not been able to come to the value of their financial, uh, what do you call it? Financial what? Here is an auditor of bank for many years. It's confirming what I'm saying. So, you will know that their growing big is not their utmost concern of the devil is to destroy your lives let me say it again any job that tampers with your relationship with God you are working for the devil you got to pray for deliverance you got to pray for emancipation I will admit that sometimes the demands of your job get you busy but if it becomes the routine that is your enemy Amen. If you are a preacher, you will lack an, you will lose anointing. Are you listening to me? Because we are only are inspired as much as we share connection. Do you get that? As much as we share connection. Look, take a coal of fire, so red, out of bunch of coals of fire. That redness will only survive for some time. The day you take him out of it, you have sentenced him to death. If you don't return it, it will die anyhow. So it doesn't leave anybody out. We must nourish our lives and we must prepare ourselves to come to you. All you do is to nourish your life by the word of the Lord. But the preacher nourishes his life. Amen. He's, then he also studied to be an approved workman. Now, if anything is tampering with that and you can't rise above it, it has become your enemy. Let me share with you the life of the prophet. For you to know certain things are possible. The prophet was like what we call electricity staff. In our country, they call them Nepal staff. Amen? There was a time he was reading meters. And there was a time he was in charge of running the wires and setting the poles. He will do that all day till about six in the evening or five. That's why for most of them overseas, their services start from seven, eight o'clock. Yeah, PM. Up till now. When he finishes that, he will start attending to seek calls from about seven till twelve AM or one AM. Then he knows that they must leave for work around six again in the morning. So when they attend to see call to twelve or one, or sometimes if two, depending on how much they are, he will sit like this to sleep. He said, I sat on the chair to sleep. So that he won't oversleep. Because he must still wake up and have moments with God in prayers and study, then go out. Wasn't that a life? And he was faithful to that for about 17 years until God said, ah, 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 we are expanding this grace beyond this. You can't continue. So this is how much sacrifice we make in order not to have excuse for not doing the right thing. But if all that failed, then that job has become your enemy. You got to start prayer of Exodus. <laughs> because one of the things that inspired the prayer of the church was the need to be free from the burden of the tax masters. Some of us, you don't know you have tax masters. Let me tell you, it's time you start having phone fast. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, look, I know of a young man one time. 
He said, this phone is my enemy. You know what he did? He went and buy all those small, small techno. They call it Palasa. Okay, wonderful. That's, that's a powerful name. <laughs> he bought that one, he put in SIM card there. He said, no more WhatsApp, no more Facebook, no more this one, no more that one. And he said, I will do it for a semester. He, did, he was surprised he could survive, one, without any of those things. He was also surprised that those things never, never reduced one thing, didn't take anything from him, then he had the best results in that semester. It was somebody here that did that. Then he came back, he said, ah, in, indeed, what these preachers are saying is correct. Taskmasters. When you look at your appetite for something, and you look at your appetite for the word, and you draw a comparison, then you know you have a tax master. How many of you struggle to read your Bibles? Be honest. God bless you, bro. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Honest people are raising their hands. The Lord will heal your struggle. He will give you victory. He will rock deliverance and victory in your life. These are the words that have been sent to you. He said the word was sent to them and he healed them. May this word you are hearing heal you. Now, but you will realize that in your life, as much as you struggle to study the scripture, it's so natural for you to pick your phone and just have a good time. Isn't it? That is the pleasure of life. People who are sick on their sick bed, I see them posting. I said this person is already healed. <laughs> to be honest with you, because I was checking on the fellow, when I saw the way he was posted, I said, ah, yes, he's already fine. On hospital bed. But has that same fellow on hospital bed, were you able to pray and remind God of his promise? Say, oh, this pain is not letting me. But their phone overrode the pain. The pains. No, they are facts. Tax masters. They win our affections. They win our attention. And they eventually turn us to slaves to them. Until if we have not interacted with it, we feel our life is not complete. It's a lie. Ah, uh, the way we live is like we cannot do without our phones. Is that right? But when did GSM come by the way? They've just celebrated, is it 15 years? Eh? 20 years. They've just celebrated 20 years. Those of you who were alive uh, before it came, how were you living? Those of us who caught it in the days of. <laughs> <laughs> we have to cut by appointment if we are not living in the same place go to Brochola's office I will call you by those because very few of you the people are working in offices it's either they come to my office I was even privileged to be using not nine not at that time you see that but we have to keep appointments in some brother's office and she will keep appointment in that office. Then they will excuse us and we will be talking. And I think we even still made much more success than they are doing today. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Bro, it was Brother Dylan who said that. He said even with all the technology, they are still divorcing. But the ones we did without those technology, they are still surviving. What is it to tell you? You don't actually need these things to survive. We thank God for them, but we must rule them. They must not rule us. How can something you buy start controlling your life? How can it become your master, your idol? And some of us, it is our self-consciousness. If you ask me, some people should not have mirror in their house. Because that mirror is the tax master. 
It's not just phone. It could be anything. <laughs> they are laughing. Ah. When they come inside, the first thing they they must pay homage to that mirror. Because they are too self-conscious. Is it me that is fine like this? Are you a peacock? This is the age of eagle. This is not the age of peacock. Eagle looks up. Not even at herself. If you are constantly looking at yourself, you are a peacock. Peacock is the one that wants you to see her beauty. She will do like this and show you off. What's wrong with you? You go to the bathroom, you will spend one hour. For some of you, your school bus will come and pem, 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 pem. You are still in the bathroom. When you are supposed to be dressed and ready, I don't know them. Don't, don't start drawing your calculator. But I know there are people here. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you don't overcome that attitude, this is how you will start working. You will spend two hours in the bathroom. You will always be late for work. They will hand you a sack letter. Because you cannot overcome bathroom. And you cannot overcome dressing. It takes away your discipline and your senses of proper judgment of what to do at the right time. Praise God. Is it going well with you? I'm just expanding on the tax masters for you. Anything that you do and is so delicious for you, till you can sacrifice your prayer, your devotion, your consecration, your study of the word. Some of you, brethren, will sit together. Each of you will dock your head. Why did you come together, by the way? Is it not for fellowship? They are there for one hour. There is no interaction of 15 minutes. 10 minutes talking to themselves. That is what they call dumb fellowship. You are always fellowshipping with something imaginary. Even with people you don't know, you don't see. Tax masters. But I have a scripture church. The prophet said, perfect faith master all circumstances. You got to rise above it. You've got to defeat whatever is the devil's gimmick in your day. Let us use technology to spite Satan. Let's not, let's use technology against the devil. Let us use technology to worship the devil. Because an attempt to worship him we in the life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is your closest tax master today. Amen. And there are many more tax masters. You can fill in the gap. But friends, I give you good news. Listen to this. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. There is not enough devil that can stop life. Ah, what shall separate? This is another scripture. Old Testament version of what shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. The more they afflicted, the more they increased their labor, the more they tried to get them to get disconnected with God, Satan was missing the point. So let him bring all the armies of his tax masters. We will respond. We will carry the phone and listen to the message. We wouldn't even bother voice of God again. Give us spoken word books. They are already here. We will study our Bible. Amen. We will do things that is of eternal value. That are of eternal value to us. Yes, we shall also play on it. We shall relax our mind. Amen. We shall read news. 
We shall do things to give us a calmness, but we shall not live. We shall not worship anything here. Other than God, we will bring God into the phone and worship God there. That is the answer of a believer to every assault of the devil. If it happened like that in the first Exodus, there's a generation in this last Exodus that will do the same thing. You love him. So they never stopped life. When that failed, they went frontally to physical. Say, so kill them. We dealt with that in the morning. Hallelujah. Out there killing them. <laughs> Amen. They said, kill them. Then God gave us two sisters. Amen. Even from among the enemy's camp. God raised a standard. Look, this is to show to you that there is no heart that is not under the control of God. Shira and Pua, they were Egyptians. I want you to know that the devil will never leave you. If a scheme of his does not work, he will raise the stake. He said, what I want you to do is to, you see, we thought to severe their relationship in order to stop the progression of life is not working. So, as they bring that life, be destroying it. Then the national midwives of Egypt, God took over their heart. And said, ah, we cannot do this. So they told the king, we were trying our best, but before we get there, I love it. Amen. The Hebrew women are not like our Egyptian women. Amen. We dwelt on it in the morning. Amen. Until today we are not like them. Amen. We will not talk like them. They are slave queens. Amen. We are daughters of God. We will not dress like them. We will not live like them. We will not think like them. And we will not give birth like them. You are lively. You are healthy. Amen. Amen. Child bearing is part of God's program for you. Amen. And you are promised salvation in child bearing. Amen. Am I quoting the scripture? Amen. He says she shall be saved in child bearing if she continues in faith and holiness and sobriety. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So continue in the faith and you will be saved in child bearing. If you are pregnant, don't be afraid. Your greatest maternal prenatal care is continuing in the faith. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't catch that. Serve the Lord with the whole of your heart. That is your greatest prenatal clinic. Whatever they tell you to use in the clinic, use it. But above all, serve the Lord. Don't deny the faith. You will be lively. You will be healthy. You will be strong. There will be no complication. Some of you were promised complication. Amen. If they are here tonight, about by prophecies, ah, this child coming, we do this, ah, it will kill you, it will take your life. I said, sister, which one do you want? Which one do you believe? This was a scripture I quoted for her. For about two of them. I said, the Bible didn't promise you death by child battle. He said you shall be saved in childbearing if you continue in the faith, in holiness and sobriety. I said, sister, be sober. Be calm. Serve the Lord. And the Lord will stand for you. Amen. We've got the mother. We've got the baby. Very healthy. Growing fat. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the promise you have. That was the testimony of that woman. And that was why the Lord dealt nicely with them. Let me tell you, I believe I will see those sisters in glory. They might be Egyptians, it doesn't matter. You know why? There's a principle of the word. According to Matthew 5, if you were good, if you are kind to the believers, God will account it to you for righteousness. Where did we see you are hunger? Where did you see you are thirsty? 
when you where when were you in prison and we visited you when you did to the least of these ones you have done unto me amen, amen. the bible told me god dealt kindly with them if he dealt kindly with them in life he will do it in eternity the bible told me he made god made them houses he made their name a memorial in the land of egypt The Pharaoh that was confusing everything. Do you know he has no name in the Bible? We only knew him by the title. But the Tana record recorded Sister Pua. He recorded Sister Shira. If they got an eternal record on the positive side, be careful you will see them in glory. Gamaliel stood for the people of God in the second exodus. The prophet says such as Gamaliel and those like who stood for God's people when they matter. Amen. We shall see them in glory. They will receive eternal life. And if anybody does it today for you, oh man. He will get to glory to realize you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of this earth. Oh, glory to God. Whoever bless you is blessed. If they do otherwise, pray for them. Because it is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty. You love him tonight. That scheme also failed. It was in the process of this scheme of massive killing. No? Where? The Ramses was the, uh, was the son of this one. Okay, brother, don't worry. I will show you in the script. Don't worry, let me settle it for you. This one that started the problem after Moses left, he died. Did you catch it? Then his son took over. His son that took over was Ramses. <laughs> Who was like a contemporary of Moses. Do you understand? That was why the prophet said Ramses and Moses were raised together. Do you catch it? Uh-huh. But not this particular one who started the problem. As a matter of fact, the Lord told Moses, those who were looking for you, they are gone. <laughs> so this one has no name. But he's known as Pharaoh. You love him. Amen. Now, eh? and that's the general, all the kings of Egypt, uh, they are Pharaoh. Alright, like uh, you say, are laughing. Uh, of all your, or knee of Ife, but they are all obas, they are all kings. But that's the title of their throne. Praise God. Alright, so when that it was in the midst of this dastard act that the purpose of God was revealed this is where I'm going to close no matter how destructive the devil gets God will prove himself to be in charge it was at a time like this when the pressure of destruction and killing was going on the prophet said the brethren began to realize that they have problems in their hands. And from house to house, they began to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. The prophet said, the family of Amram, brother Amram and sister Jochebed, they took a personal concern. Many of the church members or the Exodus people, they've adjusted to the suffering. But this family said, this is not the promise of God for us. And they began a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Oh God, help us. Oh God, send deliverer. Oh God, arise. And the effect of their prayer went to their neighbors. But Amram, lately you have been praying Ada. Why won't I pray harder? Shall we continue in this condition? Brother Seth, are you happy with this condition? Brother Isaka, are you okay with this condition? I said, no, sir. Then if we are not okay, what shall we do? We must pray. You say, what is the prophet saying? What am I saying? Do you know it's scriptural? What did God say? He said, I have heard their cry by reason of the tax masters. The tax masters, Joe, tell them to pray. 
there is benefit in every trial. Hallelujah. The tax master made them call on God more than ever before. And this was how the prayer became epidemic. This family joined. That one joined until it became a national affair. Be a catalyst for good things. Some are catalysts for gossips. Some are catalysts for backbiting. When they see somebody, they know it's a personification of gossip. So they ask her, what is the latest? How many knew the character, what the character of one drama in the olden time? They call her Amebo. That was how that name came about. It was the name of a tell in that drama. He said, Madam Amebo, any news? I will say, I have new gist for you people. That was how they called Amebo for those who carry tales. Yeah, I hear it from this. I hear it from that. That one heard it from this. That one. At the end of the day, you must land on her feet. Because she's the loma. She's the refuse dump at uh, Ojota Dye. So her life has no sweet smelling savo. It is foul odors. Every bad news is good news to her. She must carry it. Why are you quiet on me? Are you guilty? Then repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are a tell bearer, your life is foul, full with bad odor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but this family, they were carriers of good things. They inspired prayers. When you go home, read teaching of Moses. You will see all I'm saying there. They inspired prayers. And it started moving from family to family until it became a national affair. In the heat of that, God looked down on the family and said, Since you feel the need that there must be a change, it will start from your house. If I say, Lord, reward everybody by their passion. Some of you will say, don't say in Jesus' name. Because your own passion is fighting. Yours is strife. Yours is contention. Yours is backbiting. Yours is just problems. You are not from the generation of Ahab, but that's the way you behave. It's only Ahab that look for trouble where there is none. Brother Bram said he always has an axe to grind with everybody. When everything is peaceful, he is sad. He must create commotion. And he's so happy to be called for every problem. They will say, we have to come back to you again. What do you know about this problem? I, 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 I don't know. I'm the effective person, the problem creator. But this family, they were rewarded for their passion. Their passion is to look at the church. And when things are not going the way they should, if all they can do is to go on their knees and intercede for that church, or for that family, or for that brother, or even for that servant of the Lord, they will do it deliciously. There's a reward for everything. I believe the prophet. <laughs> is that a revival started from that family? And since the revival and the realization that look, we must not get adjusted to this. And say, well, what can we do? We can do something. We can pray. God deposited that resources in the hand of every believer, whether rich or poor. There is one thing, amen, that all of us must have. You may not have Naira, but have prayer. Learn to pray and to pray true. You don't need money to study the Bible. You don't need money to pray. If I, when you don't have money, when you pray, money comes. So prayer bring those things. Hallelujah. Jabez prayed a prayer. He said, I have bought in my life, but I don't want it any longer. 
Turn around my captivity, O Lord. What solved this problem? He prayed unto God. Anna prayed unto God in Shiloh. And she changed her status. It will still happen again today. If we do it sincerely. A broken and a contrite spirit. God promised not to despise. Pray. How do I go in Christian life? Study the word and pray. Every day. That's what the word says somewhere. Study the word and that's what the word says. Hey, study the word and hey, prince, that's what the word says. Study the word and and all of you here, because you are waiting, say, ah, he's talking to them there. Let me talk to you here too. Study the word and Pastor Joshua, study the word and praise God, amen. All the young children, study the word and God bless you all. God looked at that family and said, from among you, I will bring the deliverer. The Bible was written, it looks as if Moses was the firstborn of that family. Because he said, and Amram went to look for a wife among the children of Levi. And uh, <laughs> it's because Moses is taking the centerpiece. There was an Aaron before Moses. There was a Miriam already before Moses. Amen. But because God was narrowing his focus to that guy at that time. And that child was born in the season of destruction. Let me tell you, if God is on the beach, all seasons are okay. Did you hear me? All seasons, whether dry season, wet season, Autumn, winter, summer, spring, they are all okay. Because God is not bound by seasons. He's the master of all circumstances. Are you catching it? It was the season of destruction. Maybe when Jogba took in, he said, Ah! In times like this, God have mercy now. We were not expecting, oh, it's a mistake, oh, look at it now, oh. Brother David, did you felt that way before? Hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Glory to God. Because the way he laughed, his laughter betrayed him. It was really like, ah, this bridge I just caught me red handed. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, the devil, cannot stand toe to toe with God. Mm. God must have told the devil, I will shock you. That life you want to stop, I'm going to bring it. And I will prove to you how dons you are. And I will show to you how my own purpose cannot be defeated. Let me tell you, there are many devices in the heart of man. Did you hear me? But the counsel of the law <laughs> I hope you are applying it to your life I hope you are realizing that if you are God's program you are unstoppable I hope you are realizing that you are too connected to be frustrated I hope your values are lining up properly when we get the kingdom understanding properly every other thing in our life we fall in line said, thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of who? Ah, when your yam is coming up, let us cover it. It does your prayer like that in God's kingdom. <laughs> My children are laughing. That what kind of, what kind of, is yam is coming up, let us cover it. She laughs. <laughs> God said, I won't cover it. God displayed it. Amen. In the presence of my, Amen. thou anointed my head with, and the enemy couldn't stop it. And the cup over. Ah. So, this table that was prepared and presented to you in the presence of your enemy, can it choke you? That means you will eat, you will chew it, you will digest it, it will do your body good, and the enemy will not be able to do anything. 
How about that? I say, how about that? And when you finish, the devil can clear the table and wash the plate and arrange them properly for the next meal that will happen in his presence. That is the God that I serve. Hey, God could have waited for Pharaoh to finish his rampage. Then bring Moses. He said, you, I will show to you that all your activity is nothing. I was born in due season. You know. There is no better time for me to come than the time I came. Amen. And I will serve my purpose. Same thing you and I. It doesn't matter if your parent felt otherwise. You were born in the right season. Yes, sir. Moses was born at such a time. <laughs> and God hasn't finished. The Bible said, when Jochebed, I mean, that's her name, saw that she was a proper child. If you are a child of God, you are a proper child. Brother Bram said, no matter what our children look like now, they are the best class of children. And he said, he said, why? He said, because they are our children. And why? Because we are the children of God. So don't speak evil on them. Don't be too frustrated to curse them. Leave them alone. They are running their own virus. Hallelujah. In the due and appointed season, the Lord will turn things around. One of the brothers, nice great brothers around us came to my house last Thursday. And at a point, he was talking to me about our last daughter. And she started, and tears were coming from his eyes. And I said, my brother, don't worry. I said, the girl is only running her symptoms. A virus is running a virus. I said, you know, virus are their time. Amen. I said, they have their cycle. Let's just manage the girl. The virus won't kill her. She will return. Then she brightened up. I said, she will return. Don't kill yourself over it. She will come back. Then he brightened up. He said, really? I started giving all kind of testimonies. I was sharing the scriptures and the message. I said, do you know one of the blessings that God allocated to us in these last days that we don't realize is a blessing of thou and thy house. Hey, you must relate with that. When you see the promises, whatever the misbehavior of those children are will diminish in your eyes. It's whatever you choose to keep your eyes on. I keep my eyes on the promise. No matter what a child does, keep your eyes on the promise. It's a condition that came, it must go. But the promises will remain. Hallelujah. I said, brighten on my brother. She's only running a viral time. After virus, she will be healed. She will be delivered. She will be freed. And by the time I share those wonderful scriptures and message, oh, my brother brightened up. And we got into other discussions. Our children are proper children. Moses was a what? Proper child. Goodly, nice looking, healthy boy. Say we will feed this one to the to Pharaoh's vampire. It's not possible. I will hide this one. It's against the king's commandment, but I will take care of this one. And she hid him for months. Three months. And the Lord said, Now release him. <laughs> ah at three months old. God said, release the boy. The prophet said it like this in the teaching of Moses. He said, God told her, if you keep her, if you keep him, you will lose him. But if you hand him over, you will get him. My, you are parents. Is that easy at such a time? And by the way, release him to what? <laughs> release him to the river full of crocodiles. Ah, that's a double tragedy, isn't it? So, if Pharaoh didn't get him, crocodile will get him. If crocodile didn't get him, Pharaoh will get him anyhow. 
But let me tell you, this is God's program. But in faith, Amram and Jokubet, they put the child in a basket and put him on river Nile. God told Satan, we have be watching, follow me. You think you think you think you can do anything without my He said, Let me tell you, I will teach you a lesson in purpose. That my purpose can never be different. Satan, listen, this is your nemesis. This little boy is your nemesis. It will shake you. It will throw down your kingdom. It will destroy your power. This is him. And you can't do anything. God exposed Moses by himself. Throw him in the water. What were the crocodiles looking at? Why did they go to sleep? When the problem of Egypt was riding over, at least they were crocodiles of Egypt. They should have supported their king. Bro, precious, what were they doing? They were sleeping. When a good meat is available for them, that is purpose. When he was released in there, Angelicos were escorting the boy. And they must have told the kingdom of darkness, try us if you can. You are demons. You are known for wrecking havoc. Come here and let's face it. You don't know the battles God fight on your behalf in the spirit realm. When he showed you a little, you will say, I must take my security personnel. I must take his... That is when you are ready to die. Who are you to secure yourself? And they were guiding. And Miriam, barefooted in the river, the crocodile couldn't even attack her. Strange water creatures couldn't attack her. Nothing stung Miriam in the river. And the Lord was guiding the part of the basket to where? To the same house of Pharaoh. God said, I'm taking the battle by myself to the palace. What do these things mean to you? Why didn't God take and go and hide the child in the bulrushes and begin to feed him by the angel and he will grow up and come back from the wilderness and say, where is the Pharaoh? I'm ready for him. You don't know the God that I serve. Is that Moses? The place where they are looking for you, people like you to kill, that's where I'm taking you. And I will show to the devil that you can't do anything. Satan, you are too daft. I will show to Satan that I am the one who let it. If I do not permit you, you can do nothing. Hey, the prophet said he put bits in his mouth. <laughs> then a mere mother like you will be threatening you, you will be shaking. Do you see your life? Sir, he has appeared to me in the dream. He said he will kill me. Pastor, if I die tomorrow, you have already admitted. What we shall be doing is to be preparing for your funeral. Because they brought you a package, you have signed for it. What can anybody do for you? You don't even, you don't even have the grace to resist. But you see, God has been speaking to you for several years. You couldn't believe that. One funny man spoke to you once. You accepted everything he said. And tomorrow you say you are a believer. Come on. Uh, tell it to another person. That's right. That's my language. All right. God was guiding it and they arrived safely. It wasn't a coincidence that the daughter of Pharaoh came out at that time. God was working on both ends. Pharaoh's daughter, come and bath. I'm bringing somebody, I'm bringing this VIP for you. <laughs> and Moses arrived. When Moses arrived, Miriam stayed. Ah. He said, come on, go and bring that basket for me. What is inside? When they bring this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Is this I'm coming brother God introduced him Amen God is not going to hide He prepared a table before you I'm showing you that scripture Amen 
It's a beautiful small boy. Oh. <laughs> when he looked, God said, don't worry yourself. This is an Hebrew. It's not an Egyptian. And he conf she confessed, this is an Hebrew boy. Not a female. Son, is that not the person his, her father was looking for? I'm asking you. So is that not an easy action? Easy prayer? Why didn't Pharaoh's daughter strangle him? Why didn't he suffocate him? If he cannot do that as a woman, why didn't he hand him over to the palace or to the soldiers? Do what my father said. This one is not Pharaoh's mate. You are not Pharaoh's mate. You are not a mate for any witch, for any wizard, for any Ogbanje, for any agent of darkness. Did you hear me? You are bigger than them. You are higher than them. You live in a realm that they cannot comprehend. And we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Far above, far above my goodness. If they take your name to their place, the Abalis will say, uh -uh, don't put me in trouble. These ones are bigger than me. They won Aman. He didn't listen. What ended his game? Even his wife said, ah, if Mordecai is a stock of Hebrew, before we have started, you will not excel. But it was too late for him. And he did not excel. His own wife pronounced his doom because an Hebrew was involved. I'm a spiritual Hebrew. I have a promise. I will possess. I am not bragging for nothing. I brag in the name of the Lord. I take that name with me everywhere. Until my time is done, there is not enough devil in hell to take me. If they come 1,000 times, the Lord promised them empty handed 1,000 times. Nobody can kill you. When your time is due, God will release your spirit. No man killed you. Nobody created me. Nobody can nobody brought me. Nobody can take me. I am beyond their meat. Are you a child of God? Are you a child of God? I am talking about you. I said Moses was brought to the palace of the enemy. The palace of the one who ordered the killing, that start killing of all male children. Here is a male child. They should have suffocated. They should have strangulated. They, but the purpose of God can never be defeated. That child is a carrier of purpose. He must deliver on his assignment. Even if he failed, God will rise him up. He must deliver the assignment. Even failure cannot stop Moses. As we are going to see later. Because he was a child of purpose. For failure to stop Moses, if the purpose of God is defeated. Think on your ways, church. And confess right. Then God said, since this is the way you want it, I will take one more step. And there's nothing you can do about it. You don't want this woman to raise her child in peace. She will raise that child and you will pay her for it. God told Satan he will pay. And all Satan could say is, yes sir, on this one I misfired. In your life, Satan will regret he misfired. I'm telling you the truth. He will regret he misfired. It will look as if we will get you. You will rise again. You will rise in might. You will rise in power as a mighty army. You are undefeatable. I'm not fantasizing. I'm giving you dossier the Lord. Because it is here. The things we read, they are to give us rapturing faith. Hallelujah. So, church. They delivered him. 
and he carried him. Ah, he has an Hebrew son. What will I do with this boy? The Bible, before the lady could gather her thought, God put the compassion of that child. The heart of the kings and the potentates are in the hands of God. God will get anything he wants. Even from the cruelest of creature. He said, so what must we do? Miriam walked off. He said, you need a nurse. A nurse will be a wet mother who has breast milk. He said, let me, can I get you a nurse to help you nurse this child? <laughs> uh, you have revelation. <laughs> Prophet Mr. said, they even did name in ceremony. Moses gave, uh, Pharaoh's daughter gave Moses' name. Because I drew him out of the water, he shall be called Moses. Hallelujah. What a name in ceremony. <laughs> he said, Go and bring me a nurse. And when they brought the nurse, it was the mother of the baby. You know why God must do that? The curriculum and the syllabus of the training Moses needed to destroy the house of Pharaoh does not exist in the palace. So there is no Egyptian mother or a palace staff that can train Moses to destroy Egypt. It must be a godly mother and a real mother. Mothers, I celebrate you. Intending mothers, I celebrate you. Be a godly mother. Because in you, in your heart and vessel, as God puts what it takes to destroy the kingdom of darkness, raise those children in the name of the Lord. And God will reward you for it. If God rewarded the midwives, how much more the one who brought for the child? Think about that for a minute. They handed Moses back to the mother with salaries. What a better way to do this thing. And now she will be at liberty. Because you don't know what that means. Wherever she stays does not matter. The Egyptian guard will always surround the place. Because a prince is being raised in that place. <laughs> oh! When, when Jochebed goes out, ah, that is the nurse of the son of the, of the daughter of the king. That is the nurse of a prince. Ah, they will gather. They will help her carry her bag. She goes to shop and says, I'm shopping for the prince. <laughs> there will be a lot of escorts. You didn't get the picture. Ah, the adversity promoted Jochebed and Hamram into royalty with royal packages. How about them driving out with security escorts? They will say, Who is this woman? Ah, that is the nurse of the prince of Egypt. Ah. When they get to the market, the soldier will say, please clear, 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 clear. Uh, what is going on? They want to shop for the prince of Egypt. Uh, uh, Mama, what do you want? In fact, is it for the prince? Take Ezra. Take Ezra. Take Ezra. Take Ezra. I want to ask you a question. What was the devil looking when all these things were going on? Helpless and stupid, foolish and miserable. That is the way your life will be. A frustration to the kingdom of darkness. Because you are children of purpose. And the purpose of God for your life can never be defeated. And the mother was raising the child. As he began to grow and get conscious, he said, <laughs> We are going into the hard crack of the syllabus now. We have done the first pull. We have done the second pull. Now start getting the third pull. So that you can know who you are and what you are raised up for. Original life. <laughs> Hallelujah. All those life of Prince that Moses was living is this fake life. 
The third pull introduced him to the original life. Faith cometh by hearing, church. The Bible told me in Hebrews 11, by faith, Moses refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter. If it was by faith, faith cometh by hearing. If it is by hearing, who taught Moses? Who taught Moses? I celebrate godly mothers again. Who are teaching our children to have a proper identity that they don't belong to the world. They belong to God. Keep teaching them. Keep teaching them. Even if they depart from it, the things will not depart from them. It will hand them down one day and bring them back to the Lord. Mothers, you are kinsman redeemer. And I believe God will have a special place for you. If you do your job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to stop now. But Moses, a child of purpose. By his purpose, he was raised by his own mother. And the Bible said, when he became fully matured and grown, he was handed back over to, to the daughter of Pharaoh so that Moses can do his job. Amen. So God took battle to the house of the enemy and he won. David never waited for Goliath to come. He ran towards him. So in us is the power to launch offensive and to also be defensive. We've got it both ways because we are children of purpose and our purpose will preserve us. The purpose of Moses preserving. We are going to live a life. We are going to look at a life who made an attempt. We are going to look at a life who was taught how to allow God to run the program. We are going to look at a life that failed. And we are going to look at a life that rose out of failure and became the masterpiece of all time. God bless you. As we journey together. Shalom. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. You taught us that these rich things are written for our examples. In the Sunday school, we were told that all scriptures, they are profitable for every blessing. That a child of God will be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is what you have shown to us again tonight. We thank you for the high serve of this hour that has made us not to see story but to see the Bible as a book of life. And in these experiences, we can relate them to our lives. And it's giving us real hope. It's giving us new faith. It's giving us a new momentum that we can make it. Oh God, the length, the breadth, and the depth of this world I pray you will place upon every heart. Make it a revelation and let it be our deliverance. We thank you for the deliverance you wrought in the life of your children in the morning. The victory you have won for them, let it be permanent. The one you have done tonight, let it be permanent. May we keep adding grace upon grace and may we keep waxing stronger. Growing from glory unto glory, be thou our help. Be thou our strength. Be thou our strong bulwark. Let your blessings rest upon us. We pray for our journey this week that you will undertake for us. We pray for our precious brother Theophilus. Oh God, whose company sent to, uh, to a number of states to start the new airport, may you take care of him. Oh God, they might have a temporary stop to come back and go thereafter. We just commit your son into your hands that you will take care of him. Whatever purpose you have in there, may you take glory. All the, all the programs are ahead, may you undertake. Oh God, we pray for the widow of your, of your servants that you will give him strength. Even in this hour. Some reality moments are coming, may you be a help. May you be the help of the family of the Okoros. Be the help of the Akintolas. Give them comfort, oh God. And make a way for all your children who are going for that trip. 
let your mercy and your blessings rest. Take care of our weak, O oh God. Our needs may you meet, O oh God. Our battles may you fight. May we learn to give all unto you, knowing that nothing could tamper with your purpose. Give us grace to stand. Give us grace to believe. Give, make our faith to work stronger. Bless us, O oh God. Be with the pastor. Be with the rest of the ministers. Be with the officers in the church. Be with every family. Oh God, pass through the audience of your people. Don't pass no one by. Oh, take glory, Master. Till Wednesday, may you keep us in fellowship with you and with one another. And when we shall gather again, let it be more glorious. Keep raising it higher and higher till we shall see our lost Christ. Thank you, Father. Whatsoever is the determinate counsel of the devil, tonight we cancel it. Every ordinance written against us, may you cancel them. Wipe them out, O oh God, that we might ride rough shot over the power of darkness and possess the gates of the enemy. Bless our children, Lord. They are not meet or pray for the devil. In the word they have had, give them strength. May he give them power. O oh God, may he give power to every believer. O oh God, to live a holy life. To put things around us under check and under control. Give us divine discipline. That our time might be spent to your glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints.